Today we're going to be testing out whether 14 Windows games can run through the brand new Game Porting Toolkit 2 and whether they work on the base M1 MacBook Air with only 8GB of RAM and 8 GPU cores. Now this is the first Apple Silicon Mac that I ever bought and it's been an absolutely fantastic machine especially for gaming. And there are tons of native AAA titles now available for the system that run great including games like No Man's Sky, Resident Evil 4 and Death Stranding. However if you wanted to play Windows games through Apple's Game Porting Toolkit translation layer, then you definitely have to lower your expectations. Firstly, we're running this through macOS Sequoia, which is still in beta, and Game Porting Toolkit is really aimed at developers. It's not meant to be an end user tool and hasn't been fully released yet. And you have to remember that we have three translation layers at work Windows to macOS, x86 64 to ARM 64, and DirectX 11 and 12 to Apple's Metal Graphics API. And lastly, we are using a machine with only 8 gigabytes of RAM. And you have to remember that on the Mac, the memory is unified. So that 8GB is shared between the system and the video memory as well. So this leaves us very little overhead when we're trying to run these high-end Windows games. So you should definitely bear this in mind when you're watching this video. So the first game that we're testing is Grand Theft Auto 5. And thanks to Game Porting Toolkit 2, we can now actually run this game in the full DirectX 11 mode. Here we're playing at 1080p on low settings. Now, in my opinion, this performs better than ever, especially as we used to run this through crossover through DXV. UK, and it used to have a lot more shaded compilation stutter. This still exists here, but it is much less noticeable. And we're able to get a decent 45 to 55 FPS. And we can also play GTA Online, the multiplayer version of this game. This is way more demanding than the single player version. You have custom maps and you're connected to dozens of multiplayer peers as well. And I recall that previous versions of Crossover didn't handle this that well. Game Porting Toolkit gives a semi-decent experience running about 30 to 45 FPS. Next, we're looking at Persona 5 Royal. So the Windows version of this game required AVX and thankfully Game Porting Toolkit 2 allows this to run. I've tweaked the settings down to low and it seems to run fine about 40 to 55 FPS at 1080p. And here the turn-based combat seems to work well as does exploration in the open world. Overall this is looking really good for the M1 Mac. Next we're looking at Yakuza Like a Dragon. This game also requires AVX and if you want to play this on your Mac then you need to use an AVX patcher or a hex editor. I'll leave a link to this tutorial in the description. I'm running this at 1080p on lower settings. The cut Teams don't look great at this graphical level, but I had to do this in order to make a playable frame rate. But overall, very playable game, running around 30 to 50 or so FPS. You'll get stutters, but they seem to clear up once you do a specific animation or attack for the second time. It seems to work fine. Next up is Assassin's Creed Unity. So this is another game which only works on Game Porting Toolkit 2, not because it requires AVX, but there's some new fix in D3D Metal version 2, which allows us to play this game now. And despite this being from 2015, we still need to run this at low in order to get a playable frame rate. These Assassin's Creed games have huge open worlds with dozens if not hundreds of characters on screen at once. So even though we are running this at 1080p low, still getting a decent frame rate of 25 to 35 FPS, which when you think about how many translation layers are going on at once isn't too bad. So here we're testing out the game Trackmania. So this is another game that seems to work really well through Game Porting Toolkit 2. We don't have any of the previous input lag issues from previous versions of Crossover. In fact, it seems to work great on my controller as well. So this is playing at 1080p at default graphic settings, running nicely about 45 to 50 FPS. So next we're looking at Hitman 3, also known as Hitman World of Assassination. Now this game, I actually had some trouble running. So even though we're running on FSR Ultra Performance Mode at 1080p on low settings, the actual in-game frame rate seems to be fine, running about 30 to 45 FPS, which would be playable. However, I kept getting these persistent long stutters. And these issues didn't happen at all on my MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip. So I think it's some kind of performance issue with the M1 and the 8 GPU cores, and maybe it's caused by the low amount of RAM as well. Unfortunately, while the frame rate is acceptable, those long stutters don't really make this a playable game, I'm afraid. So the next game we're looking at is Crisis Remastered, which is still a beautiful game to this day. Now you could try to run this on low but I think you would be doing this game a disservice. Here we're running at 1080p at the medium setting. We're only getting about 25 FPS and there's quite a lot of stuttering as well so not a perfect experience. I definitely choose to play this game on a more powerful Mac. This M1 MacBook Air isn't quite handling it. 
Now this game is Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrated. So this is a solid PS4 console generation game, which works surprisingly well on the M1 MacBook Air. So by default on the Game 14 Toolkit 2, it'll boot on the DirectX 12, but you really want to be using the DirectX 11 option, it's going to be much smoother. Generally speaking, frame rate hovers around 45 FPS at 1080p on low settings. I've actually played a substantial amount of this game on a Mac. There are the occasional stutters, but it is a completable game and a great addition to the MacBook Air lineup. So next up is Cyberpunk 2077. So of course, this is a hugely demanding open world title. And it's kind of a miracle that this even boots at all. This is widely known to be one of the most demanding games you can play. Now on the MacBook Air M1, we only have eight gigabytes of RAM and eight GPU cores. It feels like on Game Porting Toolkit 2, this is performing slightly better than Game Porting Toolkit 1. We are running at 1080p on the lowest possible settings and FSR 2.1 has been turned on to ultra performance mode. It also seems like the black screen FSR issue have been fixed and to even get 15 to 20 fps in the open world is pretty impressive considering that we're translating a windows direct x12 game onto a fanless macbook air running a completely different operating system on an arm 64 chip so here we're testing out Elden Ring. So this is another game that people request to see quite a lot. And I'm not exactly sure what you're expecting from an M1 MacBook Air. Game Porting Toolkit 2 does run this better than Game Porting Toolkit 1. However, we're running into the persistent issue that this game will go over 8GB of RAM and then force the Mac to go into SSD swap, which will really kill the performance of this game. With frequent stutters and frame rate slowdowns, I don't consider this playable at this level. If you just bought a slightly more powerful Mac, something like the M1 Pro would play this beautifully with 16 gigabytes of RAM or more. So now what I'm going to do is talk about some of the games which I actually couldn't get running on the M1 MacBook Air. For example, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. This actually worked fine on my MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip, but it probably won't boot because we only have 8 gigabytes of RAM and it's hitting that limit. Similarly, I tried to test out the open world game Watchdog Legion. And interestingly enough, it could actually boot. You could probably sort of play this game, but really hitting that 8 gigabyte limit is absolutely brutal. It really tanks the frame rate of this game, which is a real shame because you can see some moments when it seems to work okay, but the frame graphs are all over the place. Similarly, Far Cry 6 has so much potential, but the frame graph is showing that we're exceeding that 8 gigabytes of RAM. I think if we had just a little bit more memory overhead, then this could potentially be a good game for the M1 chipset because it's only really held back by that RAM limit. So I think the lesson from this video is the fact that the M1 chip can actually play quite a large variety of games including Windows games running through Game Porting Toolkit. However you have to be careful and pick and choose which games to actually try and run. If you're butting up against that 8 gigabyte limit then many things won't actually work and you're probably better off investing in a higher end MacBook. However if you are interested in gaming on the M1 chip then you should probably pick one of those titles which is actually natively optimized for the hardware. Games like Resident Evil 4 Remake run fantastically and are optimized all the way from the M1 chip to the M3 Max. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is the M1 chip still good for gaming and should you be running Windows games through it? Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.